A Stuart Beam Engine Refurbishment Part 3, modifications to the base, flywheel and eccentric and quite a lot of painting at the end. The first thing to do is to chop down the original base. And this was done at Blackgate's Engineering by Phil. He just chopped me one and three quarter inches off the plate using his large guillotine. This is the original piece of wood that the steel plate was mounted on and it's quite a good piece of wood so I'm going to reuse this. First of all though I'm going to chop one and three quarters of an inch off this as well. Originally I was going to do something like this using Typhoc bricks. These are excellent small terracotta bricks but when I mocked it up on the bench I didn't like the look of it so instead I'm just going to use a piece of wood to mount the steel plate on. The steel plate of course will be painted this time so it won't go rusty. I want to make sure that the steel plate matches the piece of wood perfectly. So I bolted the piece of wood to the steel plate and then I just used my belt sander to level everything off. You'll see further developments in the base as the episodes go on. One of the first things I need to do on the engine is remove these slotted grub screws. I really don't like slotted grub screws because if the slot breaks you can end up with the flywheel or any other component using a slotted grub screw permanently fixed to the crankshaft. So I'm using Allen head grub screws. I have 6BA Allen head grub screws, 4BA and 2BA Allen head grub screws and much larger ones as well. But I cannot find 5BA ones and the eccentric sheave is threaded 5BA so I re-threaded it 4BA and here I'm using a 4BA grub screw. Time now to prepare the bed plate for painting. So I'm removing these two components. These are the gunmetal brackets that hold the valve gear in place. Really I could have left them as they were because all the components on the bed plate sit on top of cast iron pads. The pads are cast into the base and the paint only goes up to the edge of the pad. But I didn't want to risk getting paint on this valve gear so I removed the whole assembly. In any case it will be easier to clean up the valve rods if I just have them in my hand instead of wrestling with them whilst they're still fastened to the base. To clean up the bed plate I'm using a combination of a cloth with some white spirit and then I'm also using some Scotch Brite. And this combination always works for me. I can't use cellulose thinners or lacquer thinner because that would dissolve the paint and make a mess of the existing paint, which I'm going to use as an undercoat. But I need to key the paint, and that's where the Scotch Brite comes in. It makes lots of very small scratches, which gives a good key for the next coat of paint. I'm taking the main bearings off the top of the column, and I'll show you why in a moment. But underneath, I find a shim, a piece of shim steel. So I'll remove that temporarily because when I fit the engine back together I'm not convinced that it will need this. There was a slight knock on the engine for no apparent reason. When I look closely at the mechanical parts of this engine everything is very well made and there's not a lot of slop in the bearings and it should be okay. But there is a very very slight knock and I think that could just be some misalignment but I'm sure I will find out in due course. With any steam engine it is vital to make sure that the crankshaft is perfectly in line with the connecting rod. And it's worse with the beam engine because you have another set of bearings at the top of the beam that can also be out of alignment. What I'm doing here using the edge of a steel ruler is removing all the grime and some of the paint from this top pad. And look at this, can you see it? That's old oil. I'm now giving the top of the column a thorough clean with a piece of Scotch Brite. I'm also going to clean up the sidebars. I will be removing those after I've painted them because during the painting process I'm bound to get some paint on the flat metal part when I paint the recesses on these two sidebars. But it's going to be easy enough to paint these in situ and then I'll take them off, clean them up, remove the paint and fit them permanently back in place. I'm also going to remove the crankshaft main bearings starting with the one on the main bed plate and followed by the one that sat on top of the pedestal. So I now have four bearing blocks, two for the crankshaft and two for the top of the beam. And I'm putting them in some cellulose thinners or lacquer thinner. And this will allow me to remove the paint because I do not want them painted green. I want them not painted in the slightest, just in the gunmetal that they're made out of. This is not a difficult job. Really all I have to do is leave these parts in the cellulose thinners and the paint will fall off. Time for a health and safety warning. Apparently this stuff is not nice to handle, so don't put your fingers in there. I'm using a paintbrush. And also, you need to use cellulose thinners or lacquer thinner in a very well ventilated environment. Using a cloth with white spirit and some Scotch Brite, I'm getting a very clean, degreased, keyed surface ready to paint. And what colour am I going to paint it? Yes, you've guessed it, green. 
because it was green to start with, but this is like a mammoth green and I really don't like this. I'm going to use Great Northern Railway green. And now it's painting time, so sit back and relax. Here's some of my music to accompany it. And all I've got to say now is thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.